to start? Apparently not. All right. Uh, I don't. All right. I think we can start. Let me welcome Antonio. He's uh, Dr. Pekinjorin de Fedora, and he will talk also about the Kubernetes. So, welcome everyone to this talk about CRIO or CRIO or OCID, whatever. Briefly about me, uh, my name is Antonio. I'm also known as Rancom online, sometimes even offline, and then called me Scopio once also. <laughs> I'm a software engineer at Red Hat for the Project Atomic team, specifically at containers team, the container security. I'm a, I'm a per maintainer upstream in Docker. I maintain CRIO, Containers Image, Scorpio, and I package Fedora in Docker in Fedora. So, can you speak a little louder? I, I, I'll try. I don't have a microphone. All right. So, in this talk, I'll go through why we are working on Cryo, its architecture, its core components, a uh, sort of light demo, which is recorded, uh, how to use it, and some useful links for everyone to start maybe contributing on, on it. So uh, Cryo started because the Kubernetes has some issues when it comes to container runtimes, specifically Docker and Rocket runtimes interaction are built in into the kubelet, and so that they are the only supported runtime right now. And also the pod concept, uh, the Kubernetes pod concept is, not, is interpreted differently, differently between container runtime, for instance, for Docker is a container infrastructure, infrastructure container, but for other runtimes like Hyper or something like that, it could be a virtual machine. And so the, this pod concept is really misinterpreted by runtimes. And since this, the interaction between runtimes, uh, between the runtimes and the kubelet is built into the kubelet source code, uh, it leads to a sort of maintenance burden in Kubernetes when it comes to implementing new features, new Kubernetes features, or even modifying them, as that requires to modify each runtime in the Kubernetes source code, which is a, a really huge effort. Also, lastly, uh, it's not easy at all to plug new runtimes. So right now, we are pretty along with Docker or Rocket. Uh, this is not mentioned here, but another issue is that uh, there are container runtimes like Docker, which are adding new features at every new release in the Docker engine, for instance, and that often comes with bugs, and which leads to Kubernetes being not that stable. So that is something Kubernetes isn't doesn't like, I think. So eventually, the Kubernetes community came up with a proposal of an high-level interface, which uh, is able to talk to any runtime, as long as the runtime can speak this new interface. As you can see right now, the kubelet talk to Docker via the Docker API. And so uh, the Kubernetes community came up with this CRI, which is Container Runtime Interface, which is the CRI part of CRIO. And this is a imperative container level interface. That means that all the runtime knows is just how to start sandboxes and pods and, and containers. So there is no pod spec to be interpreted by the runtime. Uh, it's a gRPC API, which is a client server architecture. Uh, all the runtime knows, let's say, this is just to uh, start a sandbox, which can be either a container or a virtual machine. And then the kubelet will say, all right, start this container inside this sandbox to form a pod. Uh, this container runtime inter interface comes with a runtime and, and an image service, which means the runtime part is for starting pods, starting sandboxes, removing them, stuff like that. The image service pretty much does pooling of images. And this should be it. It's uh, an alpha features from Kubernetes 1.5. Uh, Docker and Rocket streams are being developed, so I guess it, it, it will be easy to swap from the built-in implementation to the, to the CRI ones. Uh, of course, since the, the interaction between the kubelet and the runtime is the kubelet, it's really easy to add new runtimes yeah, in, this, in this scenario. So uh, Cryo specifically uses the CRI and as the runtime, we're using OCI conformer runtimes. And so, uh, 
cryo. What is cryo? It's basically the integration path between OCI runtimes and the kubelet. For those who don't know, OCI is the Open Container Initiative, which is a Kubernetes incubator project. Not Kubernetes. It's a Linux Foundation project, which aims at standardizing uh, the container world. Let's say there are just uh, for now, two specification, a runtime one, which we use in cryo to run containers, and an image one, which is being developed, and we're going to adopt it when, when it's stabilized. Uh, that's just a question. We're, I'd like to see uh, cryo replacing Docker in Kubernetes, so we can run every runtime we want. Uh, cryo is specifically built for Kubernetes workloads, since it's a pre-alpha Kubernetes incubator project. We're just focusing on running uh, cryo for Kubernetes workloads, so it'd be tailored just for Kubernetes. And of course, since we have this abstraction, we can plug in any OCI runtime. Uh, all right. So let's clarify what's in scope and what's not in scope for this project. Uh, we don't want to break first. We don't want to break backward compatibility when it comes to containers image. And we work with R to make sure that we can pull images from Docker registries. And so we're not breaking that. But we're exploring OCI images and some means to pull those images as well. Uh, speaking of containers image, we support multiple means to download those images, along with optional signature verification and trust management. Um, of course, we're going to implement the full containers image life cycles, like pu pulling them, storing them creating rule file system out of them, and the container process to a cycle as well, like running containers, running pods, sandbox, and stuff like that. Uh, is, is also storage in scope? So the storage is like, right now it's just copy and write, but okay. we'll soon. see. Yeah, soon. <laughs> so what's not in scope, luckily, I'd say, is Building, con building containers, signing images, pushing them. We're not doing the stuff which Docker usually does. Uh, so there's likely no way to break that much when it comes to adding new features. And we're also going to not provide a CLI utility for interacting with Cryo. The only mean to speak to CRIO is just the kubelet for now. Uh, let's, yeah. Right, that's yeah, a huge to, topic. To no main, format. I mean, yeah, that's probably wrong. Yeah. Yeah. That's basically. It. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. 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 Yeah.
And then we have container storage, which is our way to store those images. Container storage does that by storing those images on copyright file system for now. And it also take care of, of I mean, container storage take care of creating root file system for the container when, I mean, to run the containers. And it also store images on disk. And next we have Colmon, which is a small standalone C application, which is sitting in between OCAD and the runtime. Uh, it acts as a shim, and each container has its own common lightweight process, uh, which acts as the direct parent, parent for the containers, and that's how we achieve like OCAD restarting and not losing, I mean, and not bringing down containers when it restarts. Uh, Common is also responsible for keeping the I.O., logs, and the master PTI of the container open. It's responsible for recording the container exit code, reading the container's processes when the container exits. Finally, Common uh, also proxies the container I.O. to remote clients, like the kubelet over HTTP. That's for features like kubelet exec or kubelet attach. Uh, it's worth noticing again that the container lifecycle, as I said, isn't tied to OCAD, since the parent process for the container, the OCI container, is common, and it's not OCAD. So then we can bring that down, the containers will keep running. Uh, so not what happens if the common process fails? Yeah, in, that, in that case, uh, I'm not sure. I never tried that, but I believe maybe the container goes down as well, probably. Uh, so network is provided by the CNI, which is also used in Kubernetes, as said. I won't dive into how it works, but it's basically plugin driven. And usually what it does is just, I mean, for the basic case, we use, we use it for creating vet pairs and assigning them to the container and to the host side. Uh, there are many plugins we can use, like Bridge, Loopback, EPBLAN, MacBLAN, and other. Uh, this is the core, I'd say, of the project, which is the OCI runtime, and it's really any, conform any OCI conformer runtime can be plugged in, as long as it adheres to the runtime specification. Our default is RunC, which comes, which is the reference implementation for the OCI runtime spec, and it has some cool things like SACOMs and Linux and stuff like that. Uh, we're not limited to this, I say, so we can run like OCI any OCI runtime like clear containers, RunB, many more. It's fully swappable, so as long as it adheres to the OCI runtime specification. So enough. That's the people know which runtime you are using. I couldn't. The people know which runtime you are using. No, the cube. Yeah, the question was if the kubelet knows which runtime uh, we're using, right? Yeah. So mm, I, no, there is no way to know that other than providing the kubelet the runtime version. I, I, I mean, that could be expanded, I believe. So we will work on that. Because you just start the kubelet saying that, all right, for this kubelet, just listen to this cryo socket, which will provide everything through the container runtime interface. I say, in our theory, let's see how those things work together with the log of Kubernetes cluster running an Nginx pod. I recorded. The demo. Uh -huh. All right. Uh, this is tiny. Yeah, yeah, no, this is tiny, but don't worry because right now I'm just starting OCID with a with a runtime. Right here, I'm starting the kubelet, saying that it will listen on the CRI with. Uh, the experimental CRI environment variable. So this will bring up the kubelet and say that it will connect to cryo, which we started before. <coughs> so the kubelet is up. And now I'm increasing the font size. Yeah. Alias. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so the node is up and it's running Kubernetes 1.6 alpha stuff. There are no pods. There are no pods. There are no run C containers. Docker isn't even running. So let's try and run an Nginx pod, which will take a huge amount of time. But we'll skip. Right. What Cryo right now? What it's doing is creating a sandbox for this pod 
sandbox receiver, stuff like that. It's creating the pod, it's pulling the Nginx image, it's preparing the root fault system, it will create the container via the runtime, and it will start it and profit, maybe. So. Uh, I'll pause that. So you can see at some point we were pulling the image, we pulled it, we created this container, and we started it. So we can see that the pod is running, we'll find its IP address, and we'll test this one in a browser. You can see this is working. Um, yeah, the container runtime basically exposes via the CNI in the network, and so we can connect to that. The funny thing is we still don't have Run-C container. We don't have Docker at all. What we have for this demo, we run Cryo with Clerk containers, which is uh, another OCI runtime, their OCI runtime. And you can see, since uh, Clerk containers is OCI conformant, we can run this underneath Cryo and the kubelet. And the thing is, Clear Containers is running containers as we know them, like uh, C groups and spaces. What Clear Containers is doing is creating a virtual machine underneath, starting those two pro uh, process, and providing those to the runtime specification. I mean, this is a, the standard way to output uh, the container list. And so this demo was. How do I do that under Docker now? Uh, I don't know. I don't think you can. I mean, because you need some word patches, stuff, stuff like that. Good question. <laughs> Don't they have like something to throw you? <laughs> so we can see Nginx is running, and I stop recording. <laughs> so back to the slides. So the, the demo is online on YouTube, so you feel free to socialize it, please. Uh, if you want to try uh, CRIO, there are quite a few means to do that. You can play around with the OCIC. I said that's not supported, but you can use that. You can bring up a local Kubernetes cluster or a 40 node Kubernetes cluster and try it. That will be helpful for us. Uh, there are packages, I then said that this morning, ruining my talk. Uh, there are Fedora 26 RPM, uh, OpenCU's RPM are Coming soon, hopefully, we have uh, OpenSUSE maintainer, which is helping us and probably is, is already creating those. Kelsey Tower did a great Cryo tutorial, uh, which is running Cryo on Google Cloud. Uh, right now, we reported that tutorial to our README, so you can find it in the README along with other information. Uh, so if you want to get in touch with us, uh, there is our GitHub. Uh, website I and mean, the repository. We have a um, Kubernetes channel. We have um, Kubernetes signal Slack as well. We have a weekly community meeting on Thursday, but we're sending out like information about it every week because we have maintainers from China as well, so we are trying to be to come up with a reason, reasonable time for everyone. Uh, we are excited. We have many contributors from many of the top Linux and open source container companies like SUSE, Intel, Huawei, Yaker, IBM, you name them. It's uh, worth saying that Cryo is really under active development. We, we got the pod running with the kubelet, but we're missing some tiny features we're going to tackle next month, the next month. And we have a current roadmap. Uh, uh, right now we are targeting at running the full Kubernetes end-to-end -end test the full Kubernetes end-to-end -end test uh, with pretty much good coverage, so we're doing that right now. Future plans include stuff like K-Pod, which is, I mean, to run Kubernetes pod, but without going to the CRI at all. And yeah, we are missing some other stuff with logging, but we, are, we already have pull requests for this. Uh, I guess that's it. Thanks for coming. Question? In your demo, you, you pulled the image and started it. Where did it pull it from? And I just think that Cryo had to be really pulling it. Right, so the question was how Cryo pulled the image. 
right? So, sorry? And where it's from. Right, and where it's from. Uh, so Cryo pulled that image using a containers image, which is our libraries we use inside Cryo to provide that, that functionality, especially, specifically pulling the image. So there, there were no host names, so by default, the, the, the pooling went to Docker.io, the Docker app, and pulled the Nginx official image. Any other? I guess the question is for OpenShift build as well, right. stuff like that. So, so the question was if you can run pods like using run C along with pods using per containers, for instance. Yeah. yeah. So sure, we can do that. And we're waiting for you to open a pull request. <laughs> <laughs> and you can do that. Yeah. So. Yeah. Great. So where is CRIO in the Kubernetes roadmap? What, are people, what Kubernetes version are people talking about maybe including it? Uh, I don't really know. Yes. not gotten that far yet. Uh, the question is when Kubernetes is going to adopt Cryo? Yeah, or at least support it. Support it. Well, I, I don't know at this point. It's still a Kubernetes alpha incubator project, so I, I don't really have a due date for, the, for it. Is there some kind of standard about how where it needs to be? Uh, I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sorry. So you said that the keyword doesn't know which, which runtime actually is, is running on your side. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, so how does, how does the uh, functionality of uh, the keyword How does keyword know what the node is capable of? All right, so the question is how uh, the kubelet know if the node is capable of running containers, basically, of what kind of this operation can be done. So since there is a container runtime interface sitting in between, there is a contract between the two. And so as long as Cryo provides, implements all of these methods in the, cryo, in the CRI interface, you're good. You can, you can just, I mean, the kubelet is just asking Cryo to create a sandbox. It goes back to the kubelet. Kubelet says, all right, start this container in the sandbox. Goes back, start the containers, everything is okay. That's a good question. I don't really have an idea for that. Yeah. I think you have a pass. Yeah. Yeah. So something like that. Yeah. Some. Yeah. Some stuff like that. Any other question? Any other? All right. I mean, you, you need some specific file name for my presentation? Just put the presentation there. There, there aren't three good How old? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, till seven. Yeah. 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 All right, we'll pick up the